we are heading into that time of year where we really start to lose the daylight. It can get a little gray, a little, mm -hmm. a little dreary, and that can cause some issues with how you are feeling. With the dropping of the temperatures, the shorter days, many people start to show signs of seasonal affective disorder. And it's seasonal because we don't experience it you know, the entire year. Here to help us explain or help to explain more about what that is and how we can recognize it is Dr. John White. He's Chief Medical Officer at Web at WebMD. Dr. White, thank you so much for joining us early this morning. Uh, give us a general overview of what seasonal affective disorder is. Sure, well, good morning. If you think about the letters, it, it has SAD in it for seasonal affective disorder. And that's an important point because sadness, depression, is a major component of it. What I talk to patients about is it's almost with animals hibernating. You know, those are the symptoms that you're overeating, you're sleeping a lot, you're withdrawing from others, you've lost interest and you're fatigued. Um, these are the symptoms of, of seasonal affective disorder. And Dr. White, how does this actually start occurring within your body? What is the trigger that's making this happen? And what is the science behind what is happening in your body? You know, we're still learning exactly why it occurs. We do believe there's a component of sunlight. You know, at this time of the year, the days are shorter. We see greater incidence in uh, cities that are more northern, a lot more happens in Alaska than it does in Florida. There also could be a relation to melatonin. That's one of the hormones that's involved with sleep. Some data suggests it could even be an aspect of vitamin D. We do know it runs in families. So if your parents suffered from seasonal affective disorder, you're more likely to as well. And it is interesting that people living in those uh, more north latitudes yeah. may, may suffer from this um, more often potentially, especially with the daylight beginning to uh, shorten a bit. So uh, Dr. White, some treatments for people who may suffer from SAD? You know, one of the biggest treatments is something called light therapy. Now, it, it doesn't mean you turn all the lights on in, in your house and, and stand in front of them. That, that's not a good idea, but there's these light boxes and they're actually 20 times more powerful than the light you have in your home and typically someone will sit in front of it for about 30 to 45 minutes in the morning and that seems to have a good effect there's also something called talk therapy where we actually use psychotherapy to help address some of the symptoms of depression uh, that you're having there's medications that we use, uh, something called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And there's some ongoing studies about the use of vitamin D right now. The key is to recognize these symptoms and get help. Well, thank you so much, Dr. John White. We appreciate it. And um, hopefully we can all keep each other in a good mood and get through yep. the next couple months. Yep. Great to be with you.